Hello, ACA biology students. This is Ms. Sheely with your Chapter 3, uh, Section 3 Lipid Video Lecture Notes. Please remember to take any questions and bring them to class so that we can answer them. I will be doing, uh, we, will, we will be doing some labs and activities to explore these properties of lipids and water once we return to class as well. So that will also help. All right, so first of all, almost all lipids uh, or lipids in general are largely nonpolar. This idea of them being nonpolar comes because they are hydrocarbons. And what a hydrocarbon means is that they are made of predominantly carbon to carbon bonds or carbon to hydrogen bonds. This idea of them being a hydrocarbon and having these fully saturated carbon to carbon and carbon to hydrogen bonds also makes them hydrophobic. And if you remember that hydrophobic means water fearing, which means they are insoluble in water. And that is a huge property of theirs. Lipids have main, four main functions. One is that they are long-term energy storage for most living things. They provide insulation for both animals and plants. They are the building blocks of all of our hormones, and they are major cellular membrane components. There are five main examples or different uh, classes or categories of lipids, fats, oils, waxes, phospholipids, and steroids. And towards the end of this lecture, I'll be going through each of those um, in more detail. All right, so first talking about fats and oils. So fats and oils are made of two main parts. They have a glycerol, which you can see here on the left, and a fatty acid molecule, which you can see here on the right. Um, a glycerol is an alcohol. It's an organic compound, and it's made of three carbons. So you can't see these. This is um, a, uh, a structure a line structure where there's an intersection that means there's a carbon. So there's a carbon here and up here and here. So we have three carbons, five single hydrogens, and three of these OH groups. And these OH groups are called hydroxyl groups. Okay, so we have one glycerol with three carbons, five single hydrogens, and three hydroxyl groups. And then our fatty acid molecules have um, long chains of hydrocarbons. So anytime you see a bend here, this is a carbon, and we know that carbons have four bonds. So each of these carbons would have a hydrogen on either side so that it would have four bonds um, all around it to make it happy. So here we have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and a carbon, that same carbon, also bonded to another hydroxyl group. And then we have a carbon with two hydrogens, carbon with two hydrogens all the way down, zig, 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 zag, until we get to the end where we have a carbon with three hydrogens, which is called a methyl group. So this long chain of hydrocarbons, this ends right here with the carbon double bonded to an oxygen and with a hydroxyl group at the end. This is called a carboxylic acid group. And this is where the acid part... Oh, this is where the acid part in the fatty acid name comes from. All right, so these guys will join together. So this glycerol can join with this fatty acid and right here in this area, they will join and they will join what's called an ester bond, okay? So it, we've taken, it was two hydroxyls, so two OH groups, so two hydrogens and two oxygens, where we're gonna re remove two hydrogens and one oxygen and make water. And then that oxygen that's left will bond with that carbon and that bond between the glycerol and the fatty acid is called an ester bond. This, um, because we've made water in this process, this is called a condensation reaction. It's also how we join um, monomers together to form a macromolecule or a polymer. And so a triglyceride has three of those hydroxyl groups, so it can join with three fatty acid groups. All right, so back to those fatty acids. So those fatty acids can be all single zigzags like this, um, where each carbon is bonded to two hydrogens. And this is called um, a saturated fat. So these guys have single bonds only. But sometimes we can have a double bond, okay? So that means that this carbon here is only bonded to one hydrogen, as is this carbon here. So this is single um, bond saturated fats, but this one here is an unsaturated fat. So 
Almost all of our animal fats are saturated fats. They're also solid at room temperature. It's a nice little alliteration. Saturated fats, single bonds, solid at room temperature. Plant oils are liquid at room temperature, and thus they are unsaturated fats. They have double bonds. Um, an unsaturated fat just needs to have just one double bond within the lipid molecule. Um, they are going to be li liquid at room temperature. And your oils are your main examples. So here I have a question for you. Can you deduce the meaning of a monounsaturated fat or a polyunsaturated fat? I'll give you a second to think about that. All right, so hopefully you guess that mono means one single double bond. So this would be a monounsaturated fat. And a polyunsaturated fat, you might have said many, but it just means more than one. We don't have any other levels to that. Um, so when we have a polysaturated fat, when we have more, there can actually be two different types of um, this double bond. And it has to do with which plane um, the hydrogen is on for both of the carbons. All right, so we have what was called a cis, C-I-S, um, unsaturated fat. And in that case, the hydrogens are on the same side of the carbons um, and of the, the bond, okay? Um, I like to, to think of these guys a little mnemonic way as, as their sisters, so they're on the same side, they hang out. This is going to create a bend or a kink, and this is actually what we're seeing right here in this particular unsaturated fat. Um, and this is actually very helpful in um, living organisms as it actually helps to prevent um, the phospholipids from packing too tightly, and this is very helpful in the um, cell membrane. Uh, the other type is called a trans-saturated fat, T-R-A-N-S. And the trans-saturated fats, the hydrogens are on different planes or are on opposite sides of each other. And they have to go across um, the double bond to, to see each other. So they're, they're not sisters. They're on opposite sides. All right, so trans-unsaturated fats. Why do we have these, these two different forms? Well, Tra cis unsaturated fats are naturally found oils. Plant oils are your number one example. The food industry has artificially hydrogenated oils. And this is, um, they do this so that the oils are semi-solid versus liquid at room temperature. Some examples that you may be familiar with, margarine, so that's semi-solid. It's not a liquid. It's not hard like butter. Um, some peanut butters can be semi-solid um, or trans-unsaturated fats. And then shortenings are also um, semi-solid or liquid. This is actually really good and helpful in our processed foods um, as far as the packaging and increasing the shelf life. The problem is, is that we have seen a correlation or a link in increasing the amount of trans fats in our diets will increase the LDL or the low density lipoproteins, also called the bad cholesterol in our body. Um, so this is not something that we want to continue to do. So uh, we have now have laws that make it so that fast food restaurants have to limit the amount of foods that they have that are trans unsaturated on their menus and processed foods have to um, identify if they contain trans unsaturated fats. And they're typically abbreviated as just trans fats. All right. Another type of fatty acid that we need to be concerned with is an omega fatty acid. Omega fatty acids are very good for us. They are something that our human body needs, but we do not produce. So we have to consume them in order to get them. There's two main types. There's the omega-3 fatty acid and the omega-6 fatty acid. Omega-3s are found in um, common things like salmon, trout, and tuna. And omega-6 are found in more plant oils. There are specific types of plant oils such as palm oil, so soybean oil, rapeseed oil, or sunflower oil. And they get their name by the location of the double bond from the end. So here is a fatty acid. And it is an unsaturated fatty acid. It's polyunsaturated fatty acid because we have one, two, three double bonds. 
But the omega-3 and the omega-6 get their name from the opposite end of the carboxyl. So this is the carboxyl. This um, is another way of writing that carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then bonded to a hydroxyl group. At the opposite end is that other group that I told you about, the carbon with three hydrogens. So that's called the methyl group. So we start here at the methyl group and we count till we get to the first double bond. So here is one, two carbons and three carbons. So this double bond is between the third and the fourth carbon. So this would be an omega-6 fatty acid. If this was a single bond and then we went to the four, five, Six, between the sixth and the seventh, and this was a single bond, and this was the first double bond, then it would be an omega-6 fatty acid, but this is an omega-3. All right, waxes. Waxes are also very important lipids in our lives and to very, very many organisms. They cover some aquatic birds' feathers and some leaf surfaces, and this is beneficial. This is a wonderful adaptation for these organisms because it prevents water from sticking to them. For aquatic birds, this makes it so that they can dive deeper as their feathers don't get saturated um, by that water when they're trying to dive for fish and food sources. Waxes are long chains, uh, long fatty acid chains that are esterified. That just means that they are bonded by an ester bond to long chain alcohols. So here in this case, we actually have an example where it's just the long chain fatty acids. And look at this one here. So remember we count then we would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But then there's going to be nine sets of these double bonds. And then we would have two more carbons and then 12 sets of this double bond. And then another two carbons or another single carbon in between. And then 15 more double bonds. So that's a very, very long fatty acid chain. All right, so another um, category of lipids is phospholipids. These are one of, not the most important, but one of the ones that we focus on a little bit more or the most in a uh, basic biology class. So phospholipids, we focus on them because they are the major plasma membrane constituents. They're the main thing that makes up that fluid mosaic model, that phospholipid bilayer. They are two fatty acid chains. So here you have three different representations of a phospholipid. So you can see in all of them that zigzaggy feet or legs. This one's just more of a cartoon. So two fatty acid chains attached to a glycerol. So here's our glycerol. Here is our, our carbon hydrogen backbone where the glycerol is. These are where our ester bonds are. Our glycerol again here in the middle. And then you cannot see the glycerol in this cartoon version. But instead of having that third fatty acid chain to form um, what was our, our fats and oils, um, instead we're going to have a phosphate group. And we're actually going to have a phosphate group that's been modified by an alcohol. Um, so it's a particular type of phosphate group. And they're, they all have, we represent them by this generalized structure, um, but there are two very, very common um, phospholipids. So phospho, each, there's many different types, um, but two most common in our cell membrane is phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylserine. So those are the two most common in our cell membranes. Phospholipids are what we call amphipathic, and um, that means that they have a hydrophobic side and a hydrophilic side. So if you remember from your basic biology days, your hydrophobic side is going to be your tails, your fatty acids. Remember, these are the parts that are, it's a lipid, so it's hydrophobic. It doesn't like water. But that uh, head part where the phosphate is, that's actually now hydrophilic because of the addition of that uh, modified, that phosphate group that's been modified by an alcohol. And if you were to drop a bunch of phospholipids into a body of water, they would spontaneously form what we call a micelle. And a micelle is just a sphere where there's air on the inside of the sphere and all the little hydrophobic tails are on the inside of the sphere. And the hydrophobic, hydrophilic heads are on the outside of the sphere touching the water. So they would automatically, spontaneously arrange themselves that way to make themselves happy in the water solution. All right, the last group that we're going to talk about today is steroids. 
So steroids are insoluble and hydrophobic. They don't, that's really the only two things or two aspects of them that make them um, fit into the lipid category, but they are really important in the lipid category. So most scientists do classify them as steroids instead of classifying them in their own group. They are all made of a fused ring structure. They typically have four rings. So you can see in both these um, examples, the cholesterol and the cortisol, we have one, two, three, four rings, one, two, three, four rings. Several also have a short tail. So you can see this little short tail here. And then this has got a little short tail as well. Cholesterol is one of the most um, important basic steroids. It's made in our liver, and it's actually the precursor to many of our body's hormones and to vitamin D, which we can make in our body um, with cholesterol as long as we have access to sunlight. All right, so now we're going to watch this little video animation about lipids. Welcome to Biomolecules, the lipids. Lipids are organic molecules that are insoluble in water. In biology, lipids' main functions include storing energy, signaling, and acting as structural components for cell membranes. Let's examine three types of lipids, neutral fats, phospholipids, and cholesterol. Neutral fats, also called triglycerides, are three fatty acid chains attached to a single glycerol molecule by dehydration synthesis. The fatty acid chains are the building blocks. While these chains can differ in length, each one has an even number of carbon molecules. Neutral fat stores energy fuel, insulates body tissues, and cushions and protects organs. Saturated fatty acids have single bonds between the carbon atoms. They originate from animal sources and are solid at room temperature. Other fatty acids don't bind their maximum number of hydrogens due to double bonding between carbon atoms in the chain. Fatty acids with one double bond are monounsaturated, while those with two or more double bonds are polyunsaturated fatty acids. Unsaturated fats originate from plants and are liquid at room temperature. Phospholipids are modified triglycerides, where a phosphate group replaces one of the fatty acid chains. Phospholipids, or phosphoglycerides, have a nonpolar fatty acid chain portion and a phosphate polar portion. Two layers of phospholipids are the chief component of all cell membranes. In a cell membrane, the two layers self-assemble so that their water-soluble heads or hydrophilic heads form the surface and interior of the membrane and the water insoluble tails or hydrophobic tails face each other. Cholesterol is an organic molecule known as a sterol or modified steroid. It helps build and maintain membranes and composes over 30% of all animal cell membranes. The cholesterol molecule has four interconnected carbon rings. Cholesterol helps to stabilize all animal cell membranes. The body uses it to synthesize steroid hormones, including sex hormones, and those of the adrenal cortex. It's also used during vitamin D and bile synthesis. Congratulations, you've completed biomolecules, the lipids. All right, guys, so that's actually it for lipids. Um, please remember to bring your questions to class. We'll go over some of the highlights of this notes and then have an activity to help reinforce what you learned. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you in class.